In this video, we're going to look at metrics versus optical kerning. I'll explain the reductive metaphor shortly. Hi, I'm Adam Bennett. This is the video shot. So let's look kerning. Not kerning generally, so there'll be little to no kerning humor in this video. I want to look specifically at which type of kerning you might want to use for motion graphics. This isn't about picking one over the other, more to understand what each one does. First off, a confession. For the past five years of teaching motion design, I've been telling students to use optical when they work with type for animation. I actually can't remember what the reason was, maybe because the kerning is generally tighter. Anyway, the other day I was using a cursive font and ran into something like this. Metrics is obviously the better result, which made me question my use optical stance, and I thought I'd better educate myself. There's essentially three types of kerning. Zero. This ignores kerning pairs, and is probably best avoided. What are kerning pairs? Metrics uses kerning which is built into the font. Theoretically, the font designer will have looked at hundreds and possibly thousands of letter combinations and built those values into the font. So if you choose metrics, you're seeing the font the way the font designer intended. I see this a bit like when they used to crop films for TV and home video, back when everyone had something like this in their living room. I used to buy widescreen VHSs so I could see the film the way the director intended. I hated the pan and scanning you get when you watch films on a 4-3 TV, especially films shot in 2-3-5 ratio. And that is, in a sense, technically redirecting the movie. That's not to say you should always use metrics. If you're using a cheap or free font, there's a good chance the font designer won't have spent all the time carefully kerning all the letter combinations. And you might be better off with... Optical kerning uses algorithms to determine the best kerning based on the letter shapes. This may end up looking very similar to metrics depending on the font, but sometimes it gets it wrong. If you're using a professional font, you almost definitely want to use metrics rather than optical, and always use metrics for connected and monospace typefaces. Beware cheap fonts. You may find optical gets you better results when you use free or cheap fonts. The other thing to bear in mind is that with motion design, we're often using bold, large type. We're not setting paragraphs of text, so we need to factor in that because we discern negative and positive space differently, depending on the font size, you probably want tighter kerning for large text and animation. And optical kerning often gives you that. One of the problems is actually the names themselves. They're not very intuitive. And so back to this reductive metaphor, which may help cement the difference between the two in your mind. Metrics is sort of like Jerry in Toy Story 2, handcrafted with attention to detail, depending on the font. An optical is the ruthless efficiency of the robot algorithms. But basically, be prepared to hand kern any font you use if you really care. Even the most expertly spaced typefaces will never be set for every conceivable situation. Thanks for watching. See you again soon.